men need men to become men. I can say that in my own life, I've been hugely impacted by some key mentoring relationships. And while some purists would love to run in and say, oh, well, just follow Jesus. Jesus is your mentor. And, and that is true. But Paul said to the Corinthians when they were struggling, he said, follow me as I follow Christ. It's incredibly important. The scripture talks about that, you know, men sharpening one another, like iron sharpens iron. And you think about that picture, that's not comfortable. It's not, you know, iron doesn't just sit there <laughs> and get sharpened. There's some, there's, some, there's some butting of heads that's taking place there in that imagery. And uh, so I think it's important to, to make sure there are men in your life that they might not think the same way, way that you do. They might not, you know, do all the same things that you do. I, I'm most sharpened by men who are strong in areas that I'm weak in. The point is, is you want to grow, find men who provoke you. I think historically what we've tried to do is, is actively point out uh, God's expectations of a man in the scriptures and, and push our guys to become that and, and really have engaged our older men to engage our younger men even in things like hygiene and how to not butcher a steak. And, and I've joked around with our guys from the stage, you know, even our younger guys. I'm like, guys, let me tell you what women find sexy. Women find jobs sexy. So if you're looking for a, a wife, get a job. Sometimes mentoring takes place in a moment. Sometimes it takes place over a lifetime. And, and most mentoring is mutual. We sometimes think of, here's the mentor, here's the mentee, if that's a word. Uh, I find it's more like this, and that's real mentoring in my book. A key verse for me in uh, the whole mentoring relationship has been 2 Timothy 2.2, 2, uh, where Paul said to Timothy, the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses, the same commit to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. And I remember when I was the Timothy, and, and I'm certainly a long way from being the Apostle Paul, but now I think less about my mentors and more about have I taken the things that have been entrusted to me, and am I giving them to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. Everybody needs to figure out where they are uh, in that kind of chain and be the link that God's called them to be. And so if you're a young guy and, and you want to grow in this area, who do you see that's doing that well and engage that older guy. It's been my experience that older guys love that. that. That for you to go to an older man and go, hey man, I, I just, I really stink at managing my money. You, you seem to do it well, can you help me? They, they tend to love that, they'll tend to create space for that. They, they, they don't wanna be, you know, pastored. You know, go out and, you know, feel and chew cud until you die. They would love to be engaged. And so to really seek out, based on what you need to grow in, um, what what you want to be mentored in. And if you don't even know what you need to grow in, then I just find godly men to hang out with who are farther along than you are. We need men in our lives who see us, who see us as closely as possible to the way we really are. There are men around us who, if we share life with them, get to see aspects of our life and our character uh, that are blind spots for us. And we need that in our lives. Um, and we also need to know that those men are there and that when we call upon them, they'll be honest with us. And when we call upon them, they'll force us to be honest as well. You know, I mean, I, I, can, I can call a man who lives halfway across the country and tell the man about a situation in my life um, and shade that any way I want to shade it. But with a man who shares life with me, he's going to be able to call me when I'm shading it a way that's dishonest, because he sees me. I really believe, and, and I, I kind of go off most of my peers in this thing, that, that more than you need a guy, you need guys. Uh, I, I think it's way too much to put on one man the, the call to mentor you in all these different areas of your life. And so for me, that needs to be a group of men. Every time Satan takes somebody down in scripture, he's the roaring lion looking whom to devour, that's a one person at a time sport. He doesn't take down a herd of men, he takes them down one at a time. And uh, so we really strongly encourage our men here to get together, get on the same page. Men meeting together is a lot more than a cup of coffee. It is a lifeline to accountability, mutual disclosure of sin, uh, experience of confession and forgiveness together, support to do what's right. I just don't know how you could live as a Christian man in this world today and try to do it alone. It's not a solo sport.